Hey guys, welcome back to another session here in the Panasonic booth, also known as the Lumix Lounge. We're at WPPI 2015. I'm sitting here on stage with my good friend, Mr. Dane Sanders. Dane is a photographer, he's an author, he's an inspirational person. I mean, you know, Dane is all kinds of things, but I think first and foremost, I think you'd say you're a photographer before any of that, right? Well, I sure hope. That, yep. uh, that's my trade. Yep. Uh, and, yep. uh, but I do think that as our world is shifting, um, to think single dimensionally like that is it's short sighted. Yeah. There's just a lot more going on. Yeah, yeah. So I want to center this conversation on, uh, you know, not so much business, but more of entrepreneurialism. Yeah. You know, and the whole mindset. Because we're surrounded by, I mean, this, is, this convention floor is full of people that have aspirations to make a living with photography. Many of them are making a living, some part time, some full time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's some holes in what they're doing that can be filled. And I know that you're, you're making it your work to help fill those holes, right? I appreciate you saying Yeah. My sense is that, that you're right, this room, this, this, this amazing place called WPI that we all return to rhythmically every single year yep. to figure out kind of where we stand. Yeah, like uh, the starlings. I mean. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of nutty. But, but what I love about it is everybody in this room, they're all making something, yeah. and they're all trying to make something out of what they're making. Yeah. And both tasks of the creative process as well as the creative act of being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I mean, that old adage, every artist is an entrepreneur, every entrepreneur is an artist, it's true. It's yeah. just, or at least it ought to be if you want to monetize, or even if you don't even want to make money, you want to make a point. Yeah. You still have to think from that perspective. And I think we'd be wise to think very carefully about how we make what we make, just the, the initial creative act. But I think we should send, spend at least as much energy, especially in a what feels like a commoditized economy, yeah. uh, really thinking about creatively, how do we also build sound business models? And um, you see, it's scary. That is scary. What is scary? Those about that? three words are scary to to photographers because you think, and, and this is just me talking, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But the, the creative mind, right? You know, you're like, I want to play with pixels, I want to composition shots, I want to blur the back, all this stuff, and then you use the three words. Business, or would you say create a business model? Create a business model. Yeah. yeah. So the business model, like business and model, it sounds. Oh man, that's why. That's what I do in my day job. You know, oh, I do funny. that in my night job, and now I got to apply those physics to this world. Well, or, I, I, you know? well it's a great point because the good news is you don't. Yeah. Like there's nothing wrong with being an enthusiast. You yeah. just love the craft. Yeah. I think it's those folks so that say, like, let's say they have some kids at home and they have a roof they need to keep over their head and they need to find a way to, you know get some shoes. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think those folks that are scratching the itch of the creativity, but they're not taking the other part as seriously, they're doing a disservice to the folks that they have a responsibility to. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and the irony is, I think you're right, we should probably change our language. Not, let's say remove, create business model out of the equation. Let's just say, play a really fun game <laughs> where the scorecard is the money in your bank. Yes. You know? That's awesome. And yeah, it's just yeah. a game. It's yeah. not, you're just problem yeah. solving. You're just like, it's on your Xbox One. You're <laughs> trying to get to the next level. So. <laughs> Level up, baby. Level up. That's it. So, okay. So, here's a, here's a controversial topic here. I'm going to throw at you. I'm looking forward to this conversation because you're, you're ideally positioned to answer this. Um, this Week in Photo, a couple weeks ago, we did a show uh, titled, um, Our Photographer's Artists and His Photography Art. Hmm. Very general, and here's some context before you get mad. So here's, <laughs> here's some context. So, the friend of mine, Renee Robin, and I were having a conversation a while back uh, about, I think it was that Peter Lick photo, that controversy around it selling for six point five million, and number think, one all time, wasn't that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And her her position was, she said photography or photographers in general are not artists. If you put your camera on automatic, aim it, point and shoot, make a print. That isn't art because art should be suffered for, or you should put effort into it. Huh. She was like, a, she was comparing it to say the violinist that is an artist, right? A musician that spends years building up callus and you know sure. learning to play the thing. Then they go out and they finally create this beautiful piece. Whereas photographers, they go to B and H or Amazon, they get a tool, they clap, they snap a picture, and now they're they call themselves artists. What do you what do you say about that? Before we get into the business stuff. Yeah, I, I love the question, yeah. honestly. And and it, you know, people have been talking this since Susan Sontag. Like, I mean, this is not a new yeah. conversation, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, but I would say that um, where I'm in agreement with it is if I am not actively like in the physical universe, if I'm not creating something, meaning I'm taking different pieces from 
of, of stuff that is being used currently in one way yep. and bringing them together to make something new, I'm not actually creating. So it's okay to say I'm not a creator. I'm not a, I'm not a creative in that moment. Right. Or if I'm leaning on a piece of gear and letting the gear be the creative, I, something is being created, I'm just not doing it. Right. It, it is. It is. Which yeah. is fine. Yeah. But I think where that falls short is when people don't realize sometimes we don't just make from raw ingredients. Sometimes we're... Let's say you have a camera that's on auto and it's just cranking out stuff, but then you take that stuff, the output, and you start layering and mixing and messing yeah. and Remixing. crushing and, yeah. and you know, uh, just mashing it up. Yeah. I think what you could end up is another creative act where you're standing on the shoulders of those other pieces, but just give credit where credit's due. You didn't make the, like, you didn't do a lot of work for that first image, right. but you did something really special yeah. from there. Yeah. And I think that's where, and, or, or maybe you didn't, but you could have. You could have, yeah. It's like the Shepard Ferry, remember that controversy with the, with the Obama poster? Oh, yes, yes, Hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Hope, yeah. Right, right. Remix that, and then uh, is it yours? Is it the original artist? You know, all and, that uh, stuff. And why make it binary? Like, why not say it's the original artist and? Yeah. Uh, there's something new that got made. Now, it might be illegal, yeah. but it's still iconic. Yeah, it's so like Creative Commons attribution almost, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, if, if they chose it. So I'm a big fan of like people getting credit for their work. I think yeah. that's appropriate. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, in fact, most of anything I've ever done in my entire life, I would say, I'm sta I, without question, I'm standing on the shoulders of other people. Yeah, we every are. Time. Yeah. And it's a joy for me to give credit where credit's due. Just sometimes I forget. Sometimes I make up in my head like I made something up when I didn't. Right. Yeah. Uh, and and that's unfortunate. But yeah. But you're human. Your brain works the same way as those people way back when that made things up. Uh, so you you are <laughs> solving the same problems Look, with the same gray matter. We are just. <laughs> let's just give some perspective. Yeah. There's this blue blob in the middle of the earth that's twirling around. Yeah. And we're all dying in a, in yeah. a handful of decades. Yeah. And we ought to just try to, like, when I think of all the. Oh, this is a great story. Okay. There is a Reddit question about a year and a half ago. That is analogous here. The question was, um, if someone from the 1950s were to show up today, out of the blue, what would be the hardest thing to explain to them about our new era that we live in? And the best answer was, the best answer was that I saw. Yeah. We hold in our pocket devices within which you can have access to the world's yeah. great. Yeah. I'm, I got mine in my pocket too. The world's yeah. greatest information, like an encyclopedic manifesto of all things that have ever been. Yeah. And we spend it looking at cat videos and arguing with people. <laughs> and leaving hateful comments on YouTube, right? Like, get a life. Like, like it's just not worth the time. But yeah. I do think the philosophical conversation of what am I doing, that is worth time. Yeah. So I don't want to minimize the conversation. It's an important one. Yeah. But I also recognize there's times when I'm spending my life in good ways and, mm -hmm. and not so good ways. Yeah. I want to, in the few years I have left, I want to spend them in better ways than I have in the past. I love it. I love it. All right, let's switch gears. Let's talk about entrepreneurialism in business. Great. Right? Yeah, we've got your website up here on there. So as I introduce you, author, speaker, podcaster, I'm going to talk about that habit hacker yeah, stuff sure, at sure. the end. But let's, I know you, you kind of boil things down into three areas that you, you tackle. What, let's go into those a little bit. Sure. So probably back up just a little bit. Uh, back when we first got to know each other, yeah. I had written a handful of books, and mm -hmm. I... Um, Simple Photo Minute, you were doing that? Yeah, right? the very. I think it was the first <laughs> video podcast... Uh, to photographers that existed. That inspired me to do what I'm doing. That's so crazy, yeah. yeah. And by the way, it, it was never simple. It was never a minute. Uh, <laughs> I know it was. <laughs> it was completely off the idea was. <laughs> it um, was a thought that counts. I think the first time I interviewed, <laughs> it was 17 minutes, actually, <laughs> if I remember right. But, yeah. but, but um, the point is simply, uh, I've been around this conversation of podcasting for a little bit. And more recently, I've gotten really committed to the audio format, which I'm a big fan of. I love what you do with Twip. And, Thank you. Um, I think that it's important to have substantive conversations. Mm -hmm. I also think on the other end of the spectrum, it's important to, like I love what uh, Alex Bloomberg's doing with the Startup Podcast and yeah. uh, Sarah Koenig's doing with Serial and all, Serial, the, all these yeah. long-form journalistic stuff. Such a gorgeous medium, This yeah. American Life inspired. Yeah. So I love all of those things. And about two years ago, I started a podcast specifically for... Um, people who make things and want to make something from those things. Mm -hmm. It's called Converge, the business of creativity. Okay. And uh, have had some pretty significant voices on that. It's certainly visual storytellers and writers, authors, but also artists, uh, fine artists, uh, actors, directors. Um, it's, it's been thrilling to think of the creative process more broadly. Yeah. And that led me into uh, an event that I host once a year in January called the Go Summit. We, uh, the Go Summit. The Go Summit. Okay. It's at ConvergeSummit.com. All the stuff you can find here pretty easily, but yeah, yeah. Um, 
it was it, this last January we did this prototype year, and it was a surprise. It was a small group, very intimate, and um, we did a bunch. We committed to break even at the event, brought in some speakers around specifically three tracks. Um, how do you get the right mindset for creativity and for business? Um, how to uh, habit hack your life, meaning think about the habits in your life that will get you the best return. Yes. So if mindset is uh, interrupting, limiting conversations, seeing possibility where you didn't see any before, getting your head straight, habits are doing the kinds of things that daily would make a big difference where you put your head on the pillow at the end of the day and you feel like you've made a difference as opposed to just answered emails. Yes. Those yes. kinds of things. A to-be list, not a to-do list. Nice. And then the third piece was, I like that. That's cool. Well, See, that's a Danism right there. <laughs> a well, to-be list, not a to-do list. I just think the to-be list is way more important. Who yeah. I am is more... If, if I do that be right, the do should flow naturally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when I go for the do first and I skip the who I'm becoming, yep. everything gets out of whack. Yeah. So um, then the third piece was just strategy and tactics around yeah. uh, business for the independent entrepreneur. And about half of our crew... We're photographers, which is great. A lot of wedding and portrait folks and some commercial folks. Yeah. But we also had like random people walk in. Like we had a, a CPA walk, or a bookkeeper walk in and we had a, um, a marketing director for a dental company. Like it was just these random people. Yeah. And we, we found these, this incredible commonality of every one of these folks were putting their ass on the line. Am I, I'm not sure if I'm, forgive me. So I, yes. Well, they're putting themselves on the line yeah. uh, to, to make a difference. Yeah. And, the, there were so many commonalities around, okay, what are you creating? Who's it for? Yep. What problem are you trying to solve? Yep. And, and what clever way are you creating a solution for people yep. and holding their hand from their problem to a solution? Love and that. It, it was fantastic. That's great. How, many, how big was that? Tiny, like 40 people. Oh, okay. Um, and, but what was shocking was a th full third of them, uh, we offered this little product as an aside where we said, hey, um, would it be helpful on the heels of a conference like this? Like, I come to WPI. I love this event. Yeah. And I go home on, like, I'm going to go catch a plane later today, and I'll be home overwhelmed with what I've left behind. Yeah. And all these great inspirations and ideas, it's so easy to have them fall by the wayside. And, like, I, I don't get, I get to come back here a year from now and feel guilty for what I didn't implement. That's right. So I think the new, the new value prop for influencers and for, for educators is not so much who's, how many people are following you. Mm -hmm. It's that how are you empowering people to implement day in, day out? Yeah. So we created this little product, a, a group coaching thing called Faster Mind Coaching. It was loosely referenced the mastermind groups, yep. but Faster Mind Coaching. Um, and we were shocked. A full third of the group who came spent over 3x of what they paid to come to the conference to buy a year's worth of coaching. Really? And, and we were just, we were moved by it because we could tell, like, we scratched a real itch where people yep. were like, if I, could, if I could actually have someone hold my hand like a trainer in a gym to, to, to keep my word and have yeah. accountability. That's it, personal trainer, right? It's That's a, it. It's the same kind of metaphor. Same concept. Yeah, you can buy a gym all day long and you know get your Bowflex and all that stuff. Forget about it. Yeah, but if you don't have someone there saying, okay, do this, do that, yeah, you, you, you can spend get real a stuck. lifetime not doing anything. Or, and feeling guilty about it. Yep. Like I'd rather have people say like, I'm just not gonna work out mm -hmm. and just call it a day. Yep. Be more honest with yourself. Yep. And then maybe you have a hope of actually making a shift. But anyways, long story short, those three things, the podcast, the event, and now this group coaching thing, uh, Next year's Go Summit, we're going for 150 people, mm -hmm. and we're going to continue. We actually have a scalable model so that people can get affordable coaching, like real-time accountability, well-formatted, where we benchmark them on the way in, like where's their business now, where's their business in a quarter, half a year, three-quarters of a year, and we, we're seeing real results. It's very exciting. I love that. I love that. I love the way your mind works, because I can see your mind. I, if I could get in your brain, I bet you it's a well-organized flow chart in there, you know? <laughs> you, <laughs> Just, you, you really don't want in. I promise you. <laughs> Around the weeds, right? <laughs> so, Dan, I've got, I've got on my, my notes here. You, the, how does the Gobi Collective work into all this? Yeah, so Gobi Collective is just kind of the umbrella behind these three. It's a three-legged stool. Yep. So we, we communicate free and out loud to everybody through the Converge podcast. It's convergepodcast.com. Yep. Uh, we have the event called Converge Summit. And then we have uh, fastermindcoaching.com. But they all fall under the umbrella of Gobi Collective. Okay. And, and Gobi is simply go and be. Yeah. Be first. Yep. And out of who you are, then the other things should follow naturally. I love that. See, you're you're doing it the correct way. So, like with this week in photo, it was a uh, more of a organic growth, right? So the podcast grew, 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 and then things became clear that we should move in different directions, and we just do you know what's necessary to satisfy the, audi the audience. Right. You're building this thing from the start, you know, with, with mindfulness. Well, it, well, <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair though, 
This is post Simple Photo Minute, Dane's Photo Minute, Ask Dane, Fast Track Coaching. Yeah. This is like the fifth iteration. <laughs> and, and all we did was we decided like, okay, let's slow down. We don't, yeah. we want to help people. Yeah. Like this is the game. Yeah. And what's our, what, what is our goal, right? What's, yeah. What is, what what is we, it that we want to do? And, and most of it is flowed out of how we're helping ourselves. Like our crew of people who do this, all these pieces, um, these are my people. Like these mm -hmm. are the eight or so folks that I do life with day and they hold me accountable. They call me on the carpet. They, I say I'm going to do something I don't. They confront me on it. Yeah. And, and it helps me keep what I say I'm going to do out in the out, output. And, yeah. And it works. Like, my re I'm seeing concrete hockey stick results in my own life and business. And, I, and we found a way to help other people do that too. It just is a no-brainer. That's great. That's great. And I know you got to catch a plane, so I'm gonna. I do. I'm gonna, thank you. Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wrap this up. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about Dane. What's the URL where I should mention at the end of this, this interview so people can go there? And you, you have a site up that people can well, go it, to. Well, I'm so glad you asked me about that before we started because I spoke here at WPI, and uh, this year um, I decided to record the audio of my talk. And I also referenced a lot of things. So the first thing I did when I got on the platform was I said, nobody needs to take any notes. We got you covered. Wonderful. Just go here and get it. Yeah. And I w it was the first time I got an ovation before I started. Like yeah. people were just like, I just get to listen, really? Yeah. Um, don't so write notes, be present. That's it. Right? So, so we created silence a Silence your cell phones. <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> but I, I wanted to make sure that people had resources. And I know you wanted to talk about habit hacking. If you still want to, you yeah, can. Yeah, I do, yeah. But uh, this page, we, we, I referenced a bunch of books that have been very significant to me in the last year or so. Uh, several apps that I use regularly. I know people love gear. I love gear. Yeah. Um, and also uh, reference points to all the things we talked about. Uh, people can have access to and see if any of it's interesting to them. That's very cool. That's very cool. So we'll we'll you can show, put it we'll show this in the video and scroll through it and everything. That's you know, great. Well, we'll if they want to find it later uh, on rebroadcast, it's just we won't get rid of it or anything. It's just uh, danesanders.com forward slash wppi 2015. Easy. Okay. Habit hacking. Yeah. What's that about? Well, okay, so I think we're all habit hacking all the time. Yeah. So if I pull up my iPhone and I'm, I'm scrolling, like I think everyone's front page on their iPhone yeah. tells you a lot because people are hacking their life all the time. Like yep. I'm a big fan of this app and it's going to get outdated quickly, I'm sure, but Workflow. Ooh. And Workflow is it, it's so like we've been doing this forever in, in Photoshop where you, you create an action that has several layers yeah. of, of activity. Yep. Well, Workflow lets you do that with several apps. So if I'm late, I'm driving home, I'm late, for, I said I was gonna be home at a certain time, I, I don't want my wife to be mad at me, I can hit one button, it'll, it'll geolocate me, it'll open up a message, it'll create a message, and it'll just pop up and say, you're 17 minutes away from home, and all I have to do is put in who I'm sending it to and hit send. Or it'll tell me where the nearest coffee shop is. Or it'll do, like it's just kind of, and I'm like, that's a, that's a habit like, hack. Like life macros, right? It's, yeah. That's all it is, it's, yeah. it's, it's life hacking macros. Yeah. And, when I look through my list, like I have a habit ha habit list app yep. that is my to-be list, mm -hmm. which is different than my OmniFocus list because I keep a firewall because I know that if I get up at 5 in the morning and I do my habit list, by the time I'm taking my kids to school at 8 a.m., I've already checked the box of this is an awesome day because I did the handful of things that matter most to me. Love that. Then when the day gets rolling, I get over, you know, like everybody, Omni takes me and yep. we got to yep. get after it. But those, those two things alone have radically transformed my life. And I, I think about hacking my life constantly. Yeah, um, and refining, right? It's, it, like, it's like a bonsai tree, right? It's creating efficiencies and, yep. and, and really, tend, like, I love, that's a great picture, Frederick, because it really is tending the garden yeah. and keeping things tight. Yeah. So, uh, and that app is called what? Workflow? Well, so Workflow is one. Uh, I'm just looking at the top of my screen right now. So I, I measure everything with my Fitbit. Mm -hmm. That's a way to have it hack. I use um, a draft. Which is this, I write in Markdown, which yeah. is a great way to write. Yeah, I love Markdown. Um, Habit list I mentioned. Clear is a great app. Yep. Um, I listen to my podcast in Overcast. Yes. Uh, if I don't have my recording rig, I have iTalk and Griffin. Mm -hmm. I have tape call. Like, there's just so many. Slack is a fantastic hack for communication as a team, and I, I, I just kind of get off on that crap. I think yeah. it's awesome. It is fun. It the is only, fun. the only problem is it's, and I, I'm, it's horrible that I use the phrase get off because. I'm going to say um, this stuff can also become productivity porn, mm -hmm. and you don't you, do, <laughs> awesome. you don't want that productivity porn. It's <laughs> it's horrible. I, I'm still in that from Corbett Barrow over <laughs> Fizzle. Uh, that's what it can be, and you you want right just the amount of hacks in your life and no more. Yeah. Because you don't get credit for getting another app or another tool. Just like we talked about earlier, yeah. 
you, you only get credit for what these tools get you when you're done with them. Yeah. And if you're not actually getting more of your life or more of your creativity or more of your business worked out, uh, the, the hacks are the problem. Yeah. Switch your system. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's part of that is analysis paralysis as well. That's right. right. So you get caught into this, this spider web of over, <clears throat> over analyzing something that you're trying to do and never actually doing the thing, and you overlay photography into that, you have, you know, productivity porn, analysis paralysis, and gear acquisition. Yeah, gear loss, totally. <laughs> you know? So gear, and, and you can also have education porn. Like, yeah. you can come to an event like this and feel like I did something this week, yeah. but you didn't, you learned, yeah. you didn't actually implement. Yep. And that's the big, I think folks come in, I, I'm already thinking, I was looking at my, like what, I'm gonna get on a plane and I'm gonna switch gears, and when I hit the ground, I have work to do. Yeah. Or I could just bask in the glow of what is Vegas. Yeah. And who has time for that? Life's too short. But what do you do? So for those folks that are, um, you know, folks that are watching this that have been at the show, they're, they're yeah. home now. Yeah. They've, they're overwhelmed. They've gone to the classes. They've seen all this new stuff. Should they be taking notes and making a to-do list of the, the next thing that they should do? Or, you know, because yeah. they're really going to go back with receipts and business cards and flyers and all this other stuff. Yeah, it's a you great know, it's question. It's overwhelming and it's tempting to just say, you know what? Next year, you know. Yeah, and I, th I think they're like one thoughtful day away from making an investment like WPI a, a year-long win. And that day is a recovery, an intentional recovery day. So yeah. when they get back or even when they're on the plane or whatever, they just give them a preset time limit. They say, an, an, in an hour, I'm going to go through all my business cards. Mm -hmm. In 20 minutes, it doesn't matter what the number is because you'll get it done in the amount of time you give it. It's Parkinson's yeah. Law. Yeah. So you just go, look, I'm going to get after... Um, getting as much value as I can in a preset amount of time, and then I'm going to set it aside. Yeah, yeah. Like, like what you can't enter in business cards, rank the cards, enter them. If you don't get them all entered, throw them away. You're not going to call them anyways. Don't worry about it. Yeah. And uh, my argument is when people do that right, they, they make a, a 10 or 20% bump over year to year. Yes. You're not going to get 90%. And you get 10 to 20, you're, you're, that's a big return. Yeah. Uh, and you, anybody can do that. They just seem to be a little thoughtful with their time. I'll give you, a, we'll close off now. I'll give you my, my hack. I want to hear it. For trade shows, after going to many, many trade shows, right? Um, you know, you want to, you meet people, all these cool people, and make new connections, and you get business cards, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, several years ago, after doing that, I get home, I have a stack of business cards. I'm like, okay, who was that? Who is that? You know, you don't know who anybody is. So I make it a point when I take a business card to make a note on the business card. Every time. You know, some people take a business card and they'll scan it into Evernote or whatever. And, you know, it's great because you have a record of it. But if you don't know what it, the conversation was about, like contact this guy about interviewing on Twip or yeah. great product about so-and-so. Go check the website out or recommend this to Dane. You know, I do that all I the like time. I like that last one. It's my <laughs> but it, so, so there's a great little um, Evernote hack called Hi which allows you to... Hi, H-I-G-A? H-I, H-I. H-I. Like, hello. Oh, okay. And uh, what you do, is that Craig Strong from Lens Baby? Oh my gosh, Craig Strong from Lens Baby. That is Craig Strong from Lens Craig Baby. Craig Strong Welcome from Lens Baby. <laughs> <laughs> Coming on set, ladies and gentlemen. Just Craig, Craig Strong, why don't you come photobomb our interview? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Craig Strong from Lens Baby. <laughs> Speaking of entrepreneurs right here, you created Lens Baby. I did create Lens Baby. How's it going? Wait. Talk into his mic. I thought this was just a photobomb. <laughs> I can a, do photobombs. But, but this is multimedia. Questions. You know, it's 30 frames a second in oh, audio. Man. So. I got to catch up. <laughs> so, see you, Craig. See you, Craig. Lens Baby. <laughs> forgive the distraction. No, I love that. Squirrel. Yeah, yeah. I know. Exactly. Um, uh, so this high app, what's cool is it's exactly what you said. So you yeah. scan the app, yep. and then you, t you have to force to take notes. You take a picture of the person, and everything uploads to Evernote, and you have a little kind of review of your whole time here. Yeah. And so, but what, whatever system you use, like yeah. I love the analog version of like you don't have time to take pictures and do all that. Yeah. Just scribble and I'm go. I'm an analog, old school. I make notes on stuff. Uh, I'm a big fan yeah. of the analog. Yeah. I really am. Yeah. But finding the system that actually gets you the results, I think it's the best investment you can make. Perfect. So Dane Sanders, we got you at danesanders.com is your URL. That's right? it. Yep. And danesanders.com slash WPPI2015. We'll take them to this page. Yeah, look at With all the links and All the talk, links, the talk, all of it. The audio of the talk, everything's there. Everything's there. And just say hi. We'd love to get to know you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Sanders. Thanks, Frederick. Have a safe flight back home. Thanks for hey, coming. Hey, by the way, thanks for all you do with, uh, with TWIP. It, You're it, welcome. It's symbolically and substantively important for our industry, and it makes a big difference. So thank, thank you, man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dave. All right.
All right, guys, that's it for this session in the Lumix Lounge. My name is Frederick Van Johnson. That was Dane Sanders. We're at WPPI 2015. We'll see you in the next video.